insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 72 teens and religion. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my mature and responsible co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Maddie? Pretty good. Tired, but good. Yeah, well, you know, that's what happens in the summertime when it's so hot out, right? Yeah. So last week, we did not do a podcast. We had a couple of real life things come up. Uh, Mommy had some work things pop up. I had some work things pop up. And Unfortunately, we just couldn't get around to it. So we're making up for it this week. Uh, and this week, actually, we have Mommy with us as a special guest. Um, we're going to be asking Mommy some questions. How you doing today, Mommy? I'm tired as well. Yeah, it seems to be going around. Yep. yep. Uh, so we're going to be asking some questions on religion. We're going to talk about how our family uh, handles religious things. And then the second half of the show, we're going to talk about how religion affects teens and some statistics on teens and religion. Yay for statistics. Yay for statistics. And I said it wrong. That's close enough. Um, So are we ready to get into it? Sure, why not? You ready, Mommy? Let's do it. All right. So I think the first thing that we should probably talk about is, are we religious? What religion are we? Um, what's our backgrounds? So I think we're just going to sort of, I'll start off talking about um, my religion and what I was brought up with, and then we'll ask mommy some questions and get some information from mommy. Alrighty. So for me, I was raised Roman Catholic. I was raised Roman Catholic from... You know, birth, I guess I should say. Um, My parents uh, were religious but did not attend religious ceremonies. Um, My father uh, had been divorced previously, and in the Catholic religion, at least at the time, um, they tend to frown on you being active in the church if you're divorced because they don't believe in divorce. But my parents wanted me and my three brothers to be practicing Catholics. So they sent us to mass. They sent us to uh, CCD or, or catechism to get all of our sacraments and all that stuff. Um, and I wasn't a particular fan of it as a result of that because it felt like it was being forced down my throat. So I don't consider myself to be a particularly religious individual. I have beliefs in a higher being. Um, but I have a great disdain for organized religion, uh, simply based on the history of Christianity and, and how it's, it's been held. Did you have any questions for me on religion? Um, uh, not entirely sure. Okay. So... Quick thing, I think. Um, why was it so frowned upon for... Um, why were they so against divorce? Did you know? or? Well, in the Catholic Church, uh, marriage is a sacrament. And, and sacraments are, are sort of sacred bonds in uh, Christianity. So you have, like, baptism. Then you have your communion. Then you have your confirmation. Then there's others, you know, uh, marriage is another one. Being ordained as a practicing minister is another one. 
let what's called last rites. When you die, you get a, a special blessing and stuff like that. So the Catholic Church saw that as you breaking your vows to God. Oh. Um, so they thought, you know, the whole idea behind it was that it was a sin. Ah. Oh. And that's why they didn't, they kind of frowned upon it. Ah. Oh. Did you have any other questions? Um, not that I know of. I might have a few later on, but so for now I'm good. All right. Well, let's have you ask Mommy the questions that we have lined up. You have those in front of you? Yep. All right. Let's have you ask Mommy those questions. All righty. So the first question we got is, do you consider yourself to be religious? I'm probably not as religious as I used to be. Um, I still can consider myself um, Jewish. You know, obviously that's that's one of those things um, most people don't ever not feel that they are, just to what degree, you know, they they feel. So I'm I'm still Jewish. I'm definitely not as religious as I I used to be. Okay, so clearly you already answered our second question, which is what religion do you adhere to? <laughs> well, let's let's expound on that a little bit so, because there are different right, denominations. So, I right. Guess. There there's different yeah, denominations of, of Judaism. Um so I was raised reform. Um I, I was brought up as a as a reform Jew. Now my parents they back when they were kids and and whatnot, there really weren't as many subdivisions of Judaism. Basically everybody was was kind of orthodox. That was really, you know, the, even though Reform Judaism, conservative Judaism were around, they weren't as popular. So, um, you know, so my parents kind of grew up in a more um, strict religious background. But again, they didn't always go to services. They didn't, you know, go to weekly services. They probably went a little bit more often. Um, you know, they kind of kept kosher a little bit more. So they were stricter with certain Jewish rules. Um, and then when we found a, a temple in our area, we, we joined um, a reform temple. And that was I don't want to say it's the most relaxed of the three, but it's, it's, you know, not as many rules to follow, I guess, as, you know, your, your ultra orthodox in comparison. Um, but we still did a lot of things, you know, like a lot of people that are, are reform don't keep kosher. It's kind of, it's your choice. You can, you can keep kosher or you don't have to. My parents chose to kind of try and keep kosher um, because that was how they were brought up. And same thing with certain holidays, like, you know, we made sure to to celebrate Passover and Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur and all the things associated with those holidays because that was how they, they were brought up. So back when I was younger, much more religious, we actually went to services almost every week and it really wasn't as much for the religious aspect it was for the religious aspect but it was also the social aspect this was where my parents got to see friends of theirs this is where i got to see friends um as i got a little bit older and i went to religious school i went to hebrew school um it actually became a requirement for students to at least uh, to attend at least one service a month and you actually had to sign in with it uh, to, to prove that you you were there and you would get like an extra credit point or, or something because they were trying to get people to come to services a little bit more often. So for me, I kind of saw it as a social outing. You know, I sat through a service for 45 minutes an hour and then I got to hang out with some friends afterwards. Um, when I got a little older, I actually started singing in the temple choir. So that kind of helped to make the service go a little bit faster because I was kind of performing during it. Um, and my dad actually ended up joining the choir as well. We were like this father-daughter team. Um, so again, it was 
very social for my family. My father was active in the men's club. My mother was active active in the women's club. I was active in the youth group. So again, for us, it was religious, but again, social as well. Yeah. And it's funny you mention that because I think one of the things that kind of turned me off from the church that we were at was we as the kids of parents who were divorced and didn't attend church, I always felt we were kind of stigmatized. Mm. You know, you kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. You know, everybody else, all the other youth that were there were there with their parents. And it was a social thing. It mm -hmm. was a gathering of the community. And my parents didn't participate in that. So as a result, I didn't know any of the people that were there. Mm -hmm. So there was no social aspect. It was basically I was forced to go listen to these masses, you know, and the Catholic masses, you know, sit, stand, kneel, sit, stand, kneel, sit, right. stand, kneel. And I, I never enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Because you always kind of felt like you were that odd wheel there, you know? You you didn't know any friends. Even when I was going to the, the religious school, we'd go one day a week. It was a couple of kids that was in the, that were in the same school that I were, but it was from kids from different schools in the area. Right, right. That's how mine was also. Yeah. So I didn't know maybe more than one or two of the kids that were in the class, and they never went to church at the same time that we did. Um, the only church services I ever actually liked was going to midnight mass for, for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And it was because it had a very ironically pagan feel mm -hmm. to it. It had a very, you know, earthy mother earth type mm -hmm. feel. So it didn't feel Christian. like your typical exactly. religious service. Right. Yeah. So, so what's our next question? Okay. So, um, how have you always been religious? I want to, um, let's try and touch more on, um, ha um, how, uh, you know. So even as a, as a youth, were you religious? Yeah, absolutely. You know, cause again, I started, you know, once we moved to, to Jackson, because again, I grew up in, in central Jersey for a few years. Then we moved to, to Jackson and it was probably still a few years. So it was maybe by first grade was when, you know, we joined the temple and when I joined, you know, the religious school. Um, and it was just, you know, it, 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 you know, there were some weekends or some Friday nights when it was kind of a, a pain because it was like, oh, I went to school all week. Now I have to go to temple, you know, and, um, you know, and then once I'd go, I'd feel OK. And, and then, you know, there it was very funny because for many, many years it was the same uh, rabbi, uh, you know, until he, he retired. Um, and there, you know, you, you go through the service and you do the different prayers and the different songs. And then at the end, there's a sermon, basically a speech where he, you know, he has some sort of theme of the week. And, I think that's required in all religions. Yeah. And it was, it, it kind of became a joke because I was usually, you know, I was a very well-behaved child. I would sit, I wouldn't fidget, and this was before the age of of electronics or toys. I sat, you know, I didn't bring my this own books. This was back in the days when we had stone tablets. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, and the, the 10, these 15, <laughs> 10 commandments. Um, and as soon as the rabbi would start his sermon, I would fall asleep. I would put my head on my mom or my grandmother's lap, and I'd fall asleep. Um, <laughs> and it was always this big joke, you know, and the rabbi remembered it up until, you know, I was a teenager and in my twenties and, uh, you know, he would a teenager always, teenager in your twenties. Yeah. A teenager. <laughs> and then into my twenties, um, you know, and then the other thing that I wanted to touch on is like for us, because we always went to Friday night services. So for us, Friday night dinner was like the big meal of, of the week. Chinese? No, we didn't have Chinese. Um, no, because the Chinese place didn't come into many years later. <laughs> um, but that when was my, just for the holidays. That was just for the holidays. But when my grandmother was alive and, and was healthy, she would cook a brisket or a, you know, a roast beef or something and, you know, some other little Jewish side or something. And, you know, and we would go over to her house you know, for dinner. And then when you were done eating the roast beef, you go to wee 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 all the way home. No, because then we would go to services. Oh. 
So that would also be why I was tired. It was also, you know, nine o'clock at night by that time. It was late. <laughs> right. So, f- you know, for us, it, it wasn't, you know, it, it was the getting together with the family for the meal and then, you know, going to, to services together. And it's funny that you say, you know, that your parents basically just like dropped you off and see you go. Oh, they didn't even do that. We had to walk you basically three walked yourself. miles to church. But like, that's the thing is it was very rare for kids to just be at services without their parents. But like I said, when the religious school started requiring kids to to show up, that's when parents would basically just drop their kids off. See you in an hour. Like, you couldn't even be bothered to sit with your kid. You know, and it wasn't even the fact of that the temple didn't want them. They just had something better to do for an hour. Now, your, you know? temple, your temple was a lot more... I think the way you've described it, it, it was a lot more welcoming to all the various aspects mm-hmm. of of gender and age. Like they did kid services, right? And stuff like that during the specific holidays. So, like around you know Passover, uh, Purim, Hanukkah, they always you know would do a, a children's service, um, and usually maybe once every couple of months, there would be a specific service that was meant for the little, little kids. Um, they, they called it like Tot Shabbat, I think, um, where it would be like more singing involved and the prayers would be, um, you know, done in a way so that the little kids would understand. And especially like the kids that went to religious school would be able to participate. Um, and my, my, uh, temple, again, it's been many years since I was a, a member of it, but they always tried to be very inclusive, Because they never knew, maybe there's somebody here that's visiting that isn't Jewish. And they didn't want it to be something where everything was in Hebrew and you had no idea what was going on. So they would do a lot in English and every now and then they would actually explain what they were about to do. Um, Because usually on a Friday night service, if somebody was having a bar bat mitzvah the next day... The Friday night, there would be a little ceremony that the the kids would do. So you could have family members from out of town um, that would go. The the temple that I belong to in, in Lakewood, New Jersey, they were very active um, with social action. So we did a lot of interfaith uh, services with local churches and other temples to try and bring the community together. So I was always brought up you know, love thy neighbor. And, um, you know, so they were very inclusive and, and, you know, you met the, the second rabbi because when we had her, you know, Maddie's naming and, you know, your mom was there. And, and I think your mom even said that she felt very welcomed and it wasn't even her religion, you know, and that was just, and again, not every temple is like that, but I was fortunate to, to be part of one, you know, that was right. Okay, next question. All right, the next question is, were your parents religious and did they belong to a congregation? Congregation. So growing up for them, it was a a little different. Um, They, you had a temple that you could go to. Um, I know my my dad went to to Hebrew school. Um, My mom kind of moved around when she was younger, so I... You know, I know that that she had a bat mitzvah. I know he had a bar mitzvah, but I don't think they were ever really members of a a congregation because, again, things were a little different back then. Like, you didn't have to be a member of the congregation, but you could send your child to religious school. So you just basically paid, like, a religious school fee. So you didn't have to actually become a member of it, where now most temples... You know, when you pay your your membership, you, you know, have the ability to send your child, you know, to religious school if you want to. Everybody wants recurring revenue. <laughs> Absolutely. Next question. All right. So the next question is, do you attend religious services regularly? Nope. Not at all. Do you want to? You know what? It's one of those things. I kind of go back and forth and... 
I haven't found that place that I felt like I belonged. You know, I don't want to just go to a, a, a temple just for the sake of going to a temple. Um, many years ago, when I was kind of first in this area, I went to uh, services in Cherry Hill. I, uh, you know, looked online, found a temple, went to it. And there were parts of it that were like, oh, I, I could see myself coming here. And then there were others where I just didn't feel that sense of belonging. Now, again, it was one service. So, you know, you have to go more than, than once before you make a decision. And then it just became something that I, I you know, unfortunately kind of didn't feel that same need for. And I guess what's kind of... um you know, one of the differences between, like, Judaism and, and, you know, Christianity is I think, you know, in Christianity, it's like, you have to go to church to pray. That's, you you can't, you're not allowed to, you could pray other places, but you have to physically go to that building. Whereas with Judaism, you're always taught wherever you are, you can pray. You want to go outside and pray in the woods? You want to go to the beach and pray at the beach? That's fine. You don't have to be physically in that that space. So I think that kind of, as I got older, you know, of course, I, I have the, the Jewish guilt from my mother, like, oh, I should have joined a temple. And, you know, you should have been going to Hebrew school for years because, you know, you turned 13, you know. Grammy would be very upset knowing that, you know, you haven't had, you know, a bat mitzvah. But it's just, it was one of those things with everything else that was going on at that certain time, you know, so many years ago, it wasn't the priority, right. you know, for us, unfortunately. Well, that's, a, I think, a good segue mm-hmm. into the next question that we had. So, uh, the final question we have for you is how is what are your personal feelings on how religious I am? Every now and then I kind of struggle with it um, because I know my parents instilled in me what I had hoped to instill in you. And there are times when I realize that I haven't. Like, you know some Jewish history, but you don't know as much as somebody of your your age. You you don't know how to read Hebrew. You don't know how, um, you know, the prayer, you know, the basic prayers besides, you know, for Hanukkah. And again, as, you know, all of us Jews in the room. Oh, what? Uh, <laughs> no, Hanukkah is not a major holiday. So... You know, so in that respect, I kind of feel like I I failed you, you know, but I know that we are also a mixed family. So, you know, it's not like we're, you know, one's overshadowing another um, and and it's OK. And it's one of those things, too, that it's also your own personal choice, too. And I think now. Um, You know, in in this day and age, you know, kids, young adults are given a lot more freedom to choose what they want to do. And that's the one thing with with Judaism is that if you decide later on that you do want to have religious school um, classes and things like that, you can do that. There's nothing that says, oh, you're 13 you miss the boat, you can't do it. Um, because that's the other thing, too, with, like, Reform Judaism and, and Judaism from, like, back in, you know, the olden times, is that a lot of people, you know, unless you were from an affluent family, didn't have the means to, you know, have a bar or bat mitzvah. So a lot of temples, and like I said, the 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 one, you know, that I, I went to, they actually would do adult education classes. So for adults who never had the opportunity to have a bar mitzvah, they would do like an eight-week course. You know, you'd sign up, you'd go a couple times a week, and at the end of the eight weeks, you had a bar bat mitzvah with all these other people in the class so that you could finally say I became a bar bat mitzvah and and that's kind of along the lines of of how daddy was saying with uh, with Christianity with this 
a sacrament, like having a bar mitzvah, bar or bat mitzvah is kind of one of those stepping stones to, you know, um, your contract with, you know, with Judaism in a way. But if you don't have it, it it's okay. You know, it's not, it, it doesn't make you less of a person if you don't have one. So a question I did have. If you were given a choice, because as as kids, you and I weren't given a choice as to what religion that we had. Right. You know, we obviously were able to exercise our choice as adults later on Mm -hmm. in life to make that choice. But if you were given a choice, well, it's a two-part question. So if you were given a choice to be, to learn religion at the age you did or as an adult, which one would you have chosen? I don't know. I think maybe as an adult, I think I would have had uh, a better understanding of it. Um, one of the, the things, obviously, you know, uh, if our viewers don't know, we were both married to other people first before we met. Um, my first husband wasn't Jewish, but we had a Jewish wedding. And one of the things that my rabbi suggested was that we take an introduction to Judaism class, you know, and there were people that were in this class that were about to get married, uh, where one partner was Jewish and one wasn't. There were people that were just interested in learning about Judaism. They, it was just kind of a history class for them. And then there were also some people who were uh, considering converting, becoming Jewish. Um, So they were, so it was this, you know, group of you know, mixed group of people. And it was one of those things where it was like, I kind of knew some of the answers, but it was like, I didn't know why I knew the answer. Yeah. So it was like, oh, it, it was a nice refresher class. Um, so taking that kind of, you know, gave me a better appreciation for my religion. So I think, you know, as opposed to, oh, I got to go to Hebrew school two days a week. Oh, I just want to stay home and play. You know, I have so much homework to do. You know, that mentality where if it was, you know, an online course or I could go, you know, one or two nights a week after work and sit with a group of people where we could actually have a discussion about it and not just being told this is what you do and this is why you do it and we don't ask questions. Um, so I think, you know, I would have, you know, chosen to, to do it as, as an adult, but I also enjoyed my youth aspect of it because I was very active in the temples youth group, the, the state's youth group, you know, and that's where I met so many friends who I'm still, you know, friends with, um, you know, today. So it's kind of a a toss up, you know, with that. So the second part of that is, if you were given a choice, would you choose to be Jewish from a religious standpoint? And I, and I can speak from experience as a Catholic, having learned of all the bad stuff right. that has happened from the Catholic Church, from the Crusades all the way up to the 20th century, I learned all that in my teen years and my later years, and really put things into perspective for me. So if I went back and I had to choose, I probably wouldn't choose that religion if I had to choose a religion. Would you choose the same religion? You know what? I think I kind of would. I I would probably definitely choose Reform Judaism. I don't think I would do, you know, Orthodox or or Conservative um, because it's the one that just kind of fits my personality, you know, um, the equality of it all, you know, um, aspect, you know, if anything else, you know, knowing that we have friends that are, are pagans, you know, and, and, uh, you know, some other friends that even though they were brought up Catholic, they kind of follow paganish ideas. I could see myself being like that pagan Jew, you know, and, and in some respects, I kind of follow that, too, because of, you know, Red Tent and and woman gathering and, and other things, you know, like that, that we, you know, go to. So we kind of have, you know, a spiritual, a spiritual, a spirit, 
can't say the spirituality. Word. Thank you. <laughs> Like, you know, it's not necessarily religious based, it's spirit based, right. you know. All right. So so now we've got a background on what mom and dad are from a religious standpoint. Let me ask you, Munchkin, what holidays do we celebrate from a religious standpoint? Well, since you both since um you were you were Roman Catholic and you were Jewish. We kind of combined the holidays and celebrated both Jewish and Catholic holidays. Like, Catholic holidays included Easter and Christmas. Jewish holidays included Passover and Hanukkah. Right. So, but our Christian holidays, when we celebrate them, we don't really celebrate them from a religious standpoint. We celebrate them more from a, what's what we call a secular standpoint. We don't talk about the religious, like, like Christmas isn't for us. It's not Jesus being born. Yeah. It's Santa Claus coming. Yeah. And Easter is not about Jesus dying and being resurrected. Mm -hmm. It's about the Easter money. Yes. So even our Christian holidays that are Christian holidays, we celebrate more along the lines of pagan style mm -hmm. ideas of the holidays. Um, but our Jewish holidays, we mm -hmm. celebrate Jewish holidays. Right. When when we do Passover, we, uh, you know, we try and do a Seder, you know. We haven't been as, as good as we sh could have been, but we, we gave it a good go. Um, you know, so we, we try and do uh, at least one Seder throughout the, the, the week of Passover. And for Hanukkah, you know, we tell the story of Hanukkah. We do the blessings of the can. You know, we don't just light the candles. We do the blessings. So we we do have that religious significance right. with it. So so I you know not to like pick one side or the other, <laughs> but if we were to pick one side or the other, I would say that from a family standpoint, we're probably leaning more towards a Jewish religion. Then we are a. Uh, you need to get that on camera at some point. <laughs> the, then we are Christian. <laughs> I'll right? do it again for for everybody to watch. So I did want to talk services real quick. We mm -hmm. don't belong to a church. We don't belong to a temple or a synagogue mm -mm. around here. Nope. Mm -mm. The only services that we really do are funerals and weddings. Yep. That's. Is sad. that something that you would like to see change? I think it would be nice to, you know, like, hey, it's a Friday night. Let's let's go for, you know, let's go to a service just to kind of see what it would be like. You know, I know that there's a a synagogue that is relatively close by uh, here. Obviously, now with the pandemic and everything, I don't even know who's having services and, and who's not. We could probably find an online service uh, to, to watch um, just to kind of see how it is. Now, I know the, the one synagogue that's that's closest to us isn't reform. It's not conservative, but it's like on that border of conservative. So it's one of those where I don't know how I would feel going there because it's not my branch of Judaism. Um, but again, it's one of those, you have to go to it and, and try it out and say, you know, and it could be something where there might be kids that belong to that, you know, temple, uh, that synagogue that you actually go to school with and didn't even know. Um, so, you know, like, I think it would be nice to have that community aspect, sure. you know, of it. How about you, Madison? Would you be interested in doing religious services? Um, mm, I'm not entirely sure. You don't even, I mean, there's no interest, there's no curiosity to it or anything? I mean, I guess it'd be kind of cool to see it, cause since I've never really done it, but, um, I mean, there is a curiosity standpoint. Mm -hmm. Interest, I'm not entirely sure. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that I did want to talk about before we uh, we took a break and we let mommy get back to relaxing on her day off, uh, and that is fundamental beliefs. Like, what do you believe? Do you believe in a higher power? Do you believe, you know, are your beliefs in line with a given religion? 
what are your beliefs? And let me, let me ask mommy first. Where do you think your beliefs fall in line? Are they conventional along Judaism? Do you have thoughts outside of that? What's what's the deal? Uh, I would say they're probably along the lines, you know, with Judaism and and probably with, you know, a little mix of, of pagan, a little mix of Buddhism. Um, you know, in, in college, I took a religions of the world class and, you know, we kind of dabbled in, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And it was kind of like, oh, yeah, I could kind of see that. And that's one of the things, too, when you start learning about different religions, like all of them, you know, have little pieces that intertwine, you know. So I think that's what kind of m- makes us all, you know, this one community of of people is that there's you know we we might call you know something this and 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 a different religion calls it that but it kind of means the the same thing um so i i think i probably fall you know in line still with with what i was brought up with okay madison what are your thoughts on on religion and and a higher being well I'm not entirely sure my beliefs really fall to one particular religion. I just have an idea that there's a higher being, um, and that there's such thing as fate and karma, and that, th- and that in the a- and that there is such thing as an afterlife, and there is a place for people who have done good, people who have done bad, and people who have done the mix of both. Okay, so that seems pretty neutral, vanilla across the board, and kind of in line with most religions. I guess. Yeah. Um, and I think I'm I'm probably in the same light as you. You know, I am not a, even though I was raised Christian, I don't have the same beliefs that I think Christians do. I'm I'm sure that there's probably a a higher being at work, and I can speak to that just by saying. The fact that humanity hasn't wiped itself out yet probably means that there's someone out there that's looking out for us since we've had the means to do it for, you know, 80 years now. So, yeah, I'm I'm sure there's probably something out there, whether it's, you know, God or Zeus or, you know, a cloud entity or Mother Earth, whatever it is. I mean, I think there's probably a, a higher being out there on a higher plane of existence. It could be the Matrix for all I know, but... I don't, I don't pretend to understand all the metaphysics of it, but uh, I think you and I are probably along the same page as there. I, I don't like organized religion, uh, putting a neat bow, tying everything up and putting a neat little bow on it. I, I think organized religion tends to do that more for, for the lay people who, who have, struggle with the idea of, of something more complex. You know, I think organized religion is sort of there to put boundaries on things, explain things to people and keep people sort of, uh, in line Mm. with a, with a Mm. set of beliefs there. Mm -hmm. And, and they try to, they make, they make religion easy for people. But I think that was all the questions that we had for mommy, this segment here. Uh, I want to thank you for sitting in with this. Sure. Thank you for Um, having me. We're going to take a quick little break, and uh, we'll be back with our second segment. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today 
at www.thesecondsithempire.com. So, I'd like to talk a little bit about the impact that religion has on teens. Uh, one of the uh, uh, sources that I looked at here was the pewforums.org. And they did a survey, and they asked a couple of questions. And I want to I want to throw these numbers at you just to get your idea, your reaction from it. Okay. So the first one they asked was, what is the importance of uh, religion? How does the importance of religion increase uh, with age? And let me first ask you this. How important is religion to you? Um, well, I understand that people, that religion is important for people to um, understand how to help people understand how the world works, um, and it can really help with what kind of person we are. And it um, and it's good that there are different religions out there because we all aren't the same, and I like that aspect of it. Um, so I guess it's pretty important. Okay. So in this survey, in the survey, you know, they, they talked to people 18 and older. So I couldn't find a survey that was strictly for teens here. Mm. So for teen, for, for, uh, people surveyed between 18 and 29, 40% said that religion was important to them, mm. which I thought was kind of high. I mean, do you think that's, that's high for importance? I mean, yeah, because um, it's a although it's not half of the population of the um, group, it's still a pretty large amount. Yeah, and and what happened? What was interesting was there's a trend as people get older. So, in age groups from 30, 30 to forty nine, that uh, percentage goes up from forty to fifty one percent. So now you're more than half the population. By the time you're 49, thinks that religion's important. Mm -hmm. And then at 50 to 64, you're looking at 59%. And at 65 and older, you're looking at 65% of the population thinks that religion's important. Mm. Why do you think it changes as people get older? Well, I mean, the question is important. What's the importance of religion as, um, with, with, what is the importance of religion while increasing with age? Right. And basically, um, as they, as we got up on the age group scale, more and more people said it was very important. And I think, um, I think that's mainly because the state, the question is kind of true and the importance is pretty high. Yeah. So. No, I think you're right. Uh, the next question that they ask is, what is the frequency of feeling spiritual peace and well-being? Um, and and the, when the study asked this, they're attributing that, that peace and well-being to a, being a byproduct of religion. And again, we see that Im importance increase with age. So in that same demographic of 18 to 29, you're looking at 50%. So... 40% say it's important. 50% say that they do reach spiritual peace and well-being. Now, the numbers don't go up as dramatically. The 30 to 49 group, we're at 57. Then we're 63. But then we top out at 65 again. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you, do you do anything at this point in time to get that feeling of spiritual peace and well-being? Um, I'm not entirely sure so do you meditate do you read do you do anything to even try to try to get to that point um i mean i don't meditate but um sometimes um reading something might bring me um some calmness okay so this next question might or might not have anything to do with religion 
So the question is, what is the frequency of feeling wonder about the universe? And these numbers were very interesting. So the 18 to 29 group said 48% of the time they feel it once a week. Mm -hmm. The 30 to 49, it goes down to 43%, mm. comes back up to 48 for the 50 to 64, and then drops slightly at 65. So let me ask you, is there anything that you encounter during the week or during your lifetime, let's say, that makes you feel wonder about the universe? I mean, yeah. It actually happens sometimes when I sleep. It makes me wonder a lot about the universe. Like, sometimes when I'm not worrying about, okay, what am I, what's going to happen the next day or... What's gonna ha or if anything bad was gonna happen, I then wonder. So how are we all, how are we all created? Is there more life out there? And well, is there someone, is there someone who causes the world to be the way it is, or something like that? Yeah, and it's funny because I I'm kind of along the same lines where I feel wonder about the universe pretty frequently. But it's more from a scientific standpoint. You know, I read science journals and I keep up on science news and stuff like that. So when I see that we've discovered, you know, a new Earth-sized planet somewhere, that to me creates wonder in the universe. Learning how many extra solar planets that we find is incredible to me. Uh, watching documentaries like how the universe works and seeing how black holes work. Most of my wonder of the universe comes from a scientific standpoint, not from a religious standpoint. And it sounds like you're kind of along the same lines, although it sounds like you may have some philosophical aspects in there. Mm. Is that accurate? I mean, yeah. Some of it is um, for scientific purposes. Like I, f like, I always wonder if there's extra life out there and if there's another planet like Earth or if there's such things as other dimensions, like parallel universes or stuff like that. Right. And But I also have the more philosophical ones, like how were we all here in the first place, and um, how... And just a lot more stuff about all the different aspects of the universe. Okay. So... The next set of statistics I had comes from a study that NBC News did. And they asked, the project involved a telephone survey of 3,370 randomly selected English and Spanish speaking Americans, ages 13 to 17, followed by face to face interviews with 267 other respondents in 45 states. So this is a bit broader, but kind of in that sweet spot for the age that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So they asked, were you affiliated with a local congregation? And much to my surprise, 82% said that they were, um, which kind of tells me that, you know, I was of this mindset and, and it's certainly skewed because of my own views on religion, but I was of this mindset that religion did not play as large a role in people's lives in general, but teens especially. What do you think about that 82%? Do you think that's high, low, or what you would have expected? I mean, I didn't exactly know what I was going to expect for, um, for this, for the percentage. Um, I am kind of surprised at it. It's a little high, but, um, I mean, not entirely sure because I haven't met a lot of religious people who are my age yeah not many people i know are not many people who are i know in school don't seem to be religious right i mean i i don't really then again i don't know them well enough for that but still so the next thing they ask is um well, i'm going to skip some of these because some of these were less important mm -hmm. uh the next thing that they asked was have you felt extremely, very, or somewhat close to God? And 71% said that they did feel one of those. Um, 
And I, and I honestly, I can tell you, at my age, having gone through all the things that I did from uh, religious school and all that stuff, I've never personally felt close to God. Um, and I don't know if that's just because I'm a natural cynic or what. Do you feel that you're close to whatever this entity is that you think runs the universe? I mean, I feel like I'm really... I don't think I'm very close to it. I just feel as though I'm just a normal person who um, is just controlled by fate at this point. Okay. Like, Do you think you control your fate, though? Um, no. The only thing that I know is that as, as just, I just feel as though everything happens for a reason. And if something happened... Um, I knew it was because of something else that happened before that, so. So you don't feel like you have any control over the events that happen in your life? Not entirely, no. Like you're stuck in a cart, you're sent down the hill, and whatever happens on your trip down happens. You can't jump out or steer it or influence it at all. I mean, in some ways I might be able to, like... As long as I don't do anything horrible and I stay a respectable person, um, I feel as though then that's the only way I can really control my fate. Other than that, uh, karma and fate take over. Interesting. Interesting. There was another study that I looked up <clears throat> from a website called ifstudies.org. And this was a large study of over 5,000 adolescents for more than eight years, and they found a couple of interesting things. They found that those who attended religious services regularly were 12% less likely to have high depressive symptoms and 33% less likely to elicit drugs, to start using drugs. Um, do you, have you ever considered religion to have that level of benefit to you? I mean, I never fully, um, I was never really entirely religious so i never really considered um how much it, how much of an impact it could have had um but yeah okay well the next thing um that i thought was interesting was um the study found that religious upbringing also contributed towards a number of positive outcomes including 18% were more likely to report high levels of happiness. 87% were more likely to have high levels of forgiveness. So now we're talking about less spiritual things and more moral things. So, do you feel that you're a particularly forgiving individual? I mean, like... I try to be forgiving. Um, if someone does something wrong and they apologize for it and show that they changed, I can say I'm forgiving, but I don't forgive people who don't change or um, anything like that, really. Okay. Um, they also found that those who prayed or meditated frequently, so you don't have to just be religious, you can meditate. Uh, they were 38% more likely to volunteer in their community and 47% more likely to have a high sense of mission and purpose. So now we're talking about an aspect of motivation here. So these people who are religious or meditative um, are more apt to volunteer and they have a more well-developed sense of self-purpose and a mission in life and that mission could be volunteering i guess um how do you because you're pretty well motivated yourself um you, we don't do a lot of volunteering at this point in time but you're pretty well focused on your goals in life and you've got a pretty good grasp on what you think your mission is in life at this point in time how do you get to that point since you're not particularly religious how do you think you get to it um, well, the way I think I get my motivation is somewhat by experience, I guess. Like, 
I hear about different goals that people have, and the major question that many people ask when they're many people have been asked when they're kids is what do you want to be when you grow up and i've been asked that question a lot of times and most of the time when i was younger my answers were completely different one time i wanted to be a musician another time i wanted to be a scientist an inventor an astronaut something along those lines and now looking back it's um for a while at this age, especially when I first started seventh grade, I honestly had no idea what I was going to be, and I had no idea what motivation I was going to take, but later on, finding more of my passions and contributing to those passions and understanding what I like to do, I started getting a better grasp on my motivation for what I wanted to do when I was older. So, so it's self-motivated, really, is what it is. Interesting. Well, I think the real takeaway from this is that, you know, even though you're not religious, there are a lot of teenagers out there who are, and there's a lot of benefits to religion, whether those benefits are from the faith that you have, the guidance of having, you know, teachers that are religious minded or, or, you know, clergy that are religious minded or like mommy said, just that sense of community. Um, there's a sense of belonging that you that, that people develop. There's a clear vision and a direction in life. Um, there's that structure and balance and like-minded community of peers. So everyone obviously believes in the same thing. So it's people that are kind of on the same page as you, right? Um, there's better decision-making skills, better ethical judgment because... If the, if nothing else, religions really enforce ethics on people. You know, that's what the whole Ten Commandments is. It's, it's really a list of ethics. Um, you can learn humility and patience. And there's a better sense of who they are and who they want to become as they get older. So all these things are benefits to religions. I'm not a particularly religious person. Um, obviously, you aren't. I think you and I are very self-motivated type people. You know, we see what we want to be and we work towards that. Would you agree with that? I mean, yeah. Um, after I finally got a good grasp on what I wanted to do in my future, I started trying to work for it. I knew that, one, I'd have to make sure I was um, good in school and that I passed through my classes and that... Overall, I was a smart kid, and I also wanted to make sure I still went up my passion, because um, what I want to do is something along the lines with art, sci with art, science, and math, and I've been trying to get myself more motivated towards um, excelling in those skills, like... I actually had a virtual camp um, last week where I took a hands-on science lab, and it was just an hour-long Zoom call where we would talk about, we would do an experiment each day, but we would learn more about how the experiment worked. Like, we learned the chemistry of water when we were doing a water experiment, and... We learned all these different things about atoms, genetics, all that stuff, and um, and we got to put it to the test when we um, did the experiments, and the experiments were pretty cool, and they were easy to do, and I was able to definitely get a better gris grasp on science and the fact that um, next year in 8th grade, I'm going to be doing advanced science as well as advanced math. And I'll be doing more, and we talked about how I'll be doing a more hands-on lab, and, and how it'll, and how I'll get more information on all these different subjects, and right, yeah, cool. Well, I think that was kind of all I wanted to talk about today. It was just sort of, you know, talk about what religion was to us. And, and how religion plays a part in other teens' lives and what some of the benefits were. 
So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we'll give you your closing remarks and shout outs. Go for your closing remark. All righty. So I guess I'm going to say that no matter what religion you are, just know that um, you, it is a big. It should be a big importance to you, whether you're not religious or whether you are. I definitely think that no matter what your religion or no matter how you choose to follow that religion, I think that it's important that do how just do how you feel and. Um, you don't have to immediately pick a religion. It takes time to understand what your beliefs want to be. Um, I'm still trying to figure out that whole thing for myself. Um, so just know that do whatever makes you happy. All right. I think that's very good advice. Thank you. Uh, before we go, I do want to invite folks to subscribe to us on Apple podcast or any podcast service that you use. Uh, you can subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. Um, or you can get all of, links to all of our uh, audio, video, show notes, and everything on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And I would invite folks to check out our long form articles on Medium at medium.com slash insights into things. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. All right. And that is it for this week. Um, sorry about not being on last week, but uh, we do have another off week coming up, um, the week of the 20-something, 23rd. Uh, we're actually going to be doing some updates uh, yes, the 24th, we will, the weekend of the 24th, we will not be, uh, recording. Um, we're going to be doing some renovations to the studio here, um, and moving over hopefully to our new video system. So I need a few days to, to prep the studio for that, but we'll be back the week after that. Uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, another one in the books. Bye everyone. Bye.